All right, so today we're, we're problem solving, right? Um, ladies who just got here, we're out of order because I'm gone the next couple days. So because there's no video for this, I figured we'd do this in person today, and then you guys can wrap up all your other stuff tomorrow, and then you have your mastery on Wednesday. Um, so Miss Adventure took a trip to Morocco. The glass in her lantern broke. Womp womp. So we're going to say that this lantern goes over top of a candle. One issue that we had when I was... Uh, down visiting my sister in South Carolina is the wind was really strong and we had like one of those bug candles She kept lighting it. It kept blowing out by the wind So it was really funny because every three minutes she was like trying to relight this candle And I was like just give up or you need to protect it. And she's like, no, it's fine And she did this for about a half an hour <laughs> Finally she gave up uh, But if the glass broke and Miss Adventure wants to get some new glass made the the glass person I don't know what a glass person would be called um, Charges by the square inch they only charge for how much glass you actually purchase. So let's assume there's no bottom on this lantern. Let's assume you set it over top of your candle. You can set it down on it. So how much glass would we need to fix all of the windows? Let's say shipping was really bad. They like toss the thing around. Every single piece of glass on there broke. We gotta replace the entire thing. So let's start at the top because the top looks a little bit more complicated. First off, what do you notice about the shape that we have here? It's like two different shapes really. Uh, triangle is a two-dimensional shape. Oh, we have a pyramid and a cube. Yeah, we have a pyramid sitting on top of a cube. And by the, the fact that, that we have a cube, what's that tell me about the base? Yeah, it's a square. So I know that all four of these triangles will all be the same, right? So if I calculate one of these triangles, I'll do it in red since those dimensions are red. If I calculate one of those triangles, I can then just quadruple it. How do I find the area of a triangle? Base times height yeah, I prefer the one half coming first so I don't forget it. So I do one half base times height. What is your base and what is your height here, Nate? Uh, is it four because the base and side? Yeah, notice that that four inches is the gap from here to here. But that's what I want because I'm looking at the gap from here to here, and that's the same. I draw a line right there and draw a line right there. So my base is four inches. My height then, the height of the triangle, is three inches because it shows me right here with this line that that's three inches. Shaheeb, this is also why I do my one half first. One half of four, really easy. So half of four is? Two, two times three is? Three. So we get six inches squared. What do we need to do now? What, Ella? Because there are four of those glass sections on the top. So we times it by four. Try to do the base part while I orient this real fast. So this would give me 24 inches squared. So now my area, Jackson, how do I find the area of one of those square windows? Ooh, we don't want volume. If you multiply three things together, length with height or length with what, that would actually be volume. So I agree with you, length times width, but because it's a square, we can really make it easier and do the edge length, smart board, the edge length squared. The area of a square is the edge length squared. So the edge length here is four, so we have four squared. That'll give me 16 inches squared for each of those windows. Multiply by four because we have four of those. We get 64 inches squared. So for my total glass that I have to purchase, I think this black. How do I find that? Yeah, just add them. 64 
plus 24 equals 88 what? Inches squared. Remember, if it's area, it's always squared. Questions, comments, concerns? Let's dive into some of these fun problems that we get to solve today. I'm serious. I like the cube problem, especially the cake one. I hope we get to it. So you're going to build a doghouse. And actually, I am planning to build a doghouse for my puppies this summer. It's going to have the dimensions shown. Your doghouse is going to look like a real house. It's so big. Right? Three feet tall, uh, five feet long. Because if you look at this dimension right here, five feet long. Yeah, the the two feet is how wide the front is. Ah, so this front section, by us having this label of one foot and this label of one foot, you have like the doggy door in the front of it is one foot square. Not really. Dogs get through really small spaces. I mean, a foot is pretty big. If you think about a foot by a foot, that'd be this wide by a little bit taller. And dogs can crawl through like pretty small spaces. Um, and it, if I had played the video, the dog they show is like a little yappy dog. So you don't need a very big dog house. Um, so we need to figure out how much this is going to cost us. What we see. Shingles cost 99 cents per square foot. A two ounce container of paint costs 2.99 and will cover three square feet. That's so important. Does the two ounces matter? But if I know, so what if I say a can of paint costs two ninety nine and covers three square feet? Can you still calculate the cost without knowing how much paint is in the can? Yeah. Here, the ounces of paint, that too, is a distractor. It's one of those numbers that you don't need in the problem, but they give it to you trying to see if you'll use it and goof yourself up. So always identify what do I actually need and what's unimportant. The amount of paint in the can doesn't matter. So what they're saying is, well, and I hate that they say you plan to build a doghouse. They don't have any wood costs on here. So we'll assume that the wood, I had the wood. Let's assume I got a bunch of scrap wood. I can build this for free, but the paint I'm going to have to buy and the shingles I'm going to have to buy. Let's start with the roof. Why do you think I'm starting with the roof? Okay, well, the same guy's here. Rye, why do you think I'm starting with the roof? Uh, because, well, first off, isn't it because it's pretty easy? But why? Why is it? I agree, um, but why? All you have to do is, uh, if you know that, like, the uh, edges are going to be the curved and it's going to stay straight, and then going to be five feet wide, so all you have to do is multiply. What shape are the sides of the roof? Rectangles. Yeah, so the roof is just two rectangles. So, what we need is the dimensions, right? We have the dimensions. They're given to me. Zach, what are my dimensions? 1.4 by 12. Yeah, you were kind of spaced, so I had to bring you back. So, the area, we've got five and 1.4. I agree, my dogs did not do good with the thunderstorm last night. I'm assuming your baby system maybe didn't do well either. So when I compute five times 1.4, break this up. What would, now forget about the 0.4 for a second. What would five times four be? 20. Now, because we had a decimal point, like a decimal place, we gotta shift it back. So really, 5 times 0.4 is 2. What's 5 times 1? So if I have 5 and 2, I really have 7. But that's one side of the roof. So, ooh, not divide by 2, times 2. So the area, and I'm going to do A sub R for the area of the roof, will be 14. And since these were both feet, we know that's feet squared. So how can I figure out what the roof will cost me? Jackson? Okay. 
Yep. Since this is per square foot, I'm going to have to multiply my 14 feet by 99 cents. And when I'm doing this sort of math, when I'm doing a project, what do you think we do with the 99 cents? Round, yeah. up. round up to a dollar, right? But if I want to be really exact, round this to a dollar, and then what would I need to take away to fix my answer? Because if I round this to a dollar, I get $14, right? But what would I need to take off of that to correct what I've done, Zach? Ooh, not 36. What am I missing from each dollar? One cent. How many times will I miss it? So we need to take $14 minus the 14 cents, and we get $13 and 86 cents. But that's just for the roof. I challenge you guys, and if you need post-its or anything else, you can come grab paper, post-its, whatever you need. I challenge you guys to figure out the cost of your paint. You can work in small groups, like just with your neighbor, like don't really move or anything. Um, be careful because every two ninety nine dollars covers three square feet. Yep. Now, I would tell you, figure out what the square foot cost is, but it gets messy. If you take 299 divided by 3, it's going to give you like a longer decimal number. So you can do that if you want, if you like it that way. Or you can solve it the other way, which we're going to look at both. So take Wait, take a couple minutes. Is it painted on the inside? No, not painted on the inside. Just paint. you got to paint the outside to protect the wood. Yeah. If you're struggling, here's a hint. If you're struggling, there's a hint. I got a question for you guys. What would the top section of your doghouse, what would the height of that triangle be? Okay, should we? Why? Oh, yeah. Okay. The whole thing is three feet tall. This section is two feet tall. So this must be one foot tall. That's why I'm here, man. Not to make you feel stupid, just to make you think like that on your own. So you were trying to use like how it looks. Never trust how images look unless they say they are to scale. This doesn't say this is to scale. Yeah. I was thinking because Looks are deceiving. You know how they say like you can't judge a book by its cover. Like always, looks are deceiving. The brain plays tricks on you. minutes I said. No, we already did the roof. You don't paint the roof. We shingled the roof. We already did that. You cannot paint shingles. It will not work very well. I mean, you can try, but it's not. Yeah, it's like chicken pox, but if you had chicken pox, then you can get shingles when you're older. My mom got shingles. Yeah, so did mine. It's it's really annoying. It's not like that dangerous. It's just really annoying. I got chicken pox and I got 
So we know the roof is going to cost me 1386. All right, let's bring it back together. Has anybody figured out the easy parts that we're going to paint? Like the quick, easy painting is like this. I don't care about cost right now. I care about the square footage. Boyer? Uh, the side by two sides. Yes, yeah, so like the left and right sides, right? So if I say like left and right are rectangles, then I can say the area, I'm gonna say A sub L, the area of the left, or I could say A sub R for area of the right. You just said it's five by two. So five by two, 10. So what would be the area of the right then? Wait, you gotta multiply that by two. Yeah, or if I just keep track of all of them, I can say the area of the left is 10, oh. the area of the right is 10, because I'm gonna add these up in a little bit once I find all of my sides. Now, what do you know about the front and the back? Wait a second, is that a question? Instead of multiplying by two, I just wrote them both down, 10 and 10. Area of the left, area of the right. That's why I'm using sub or underscripts. There's superscript and then underscripts. So underscripts, and you have this setting on Word if you ever wanna do this, it's superscript and underscript. Um, so now I'm gonna do area of the front and area of the back. They're different because Ooh. the doors and the front they're Are they similar to each other? Yeah. yeah, they're similar. So you said they're different because there's a door on the front. So if the door wasn't there, they'd be the same, yeah? Yeah. So let's first do what? If they were the same. If they were the then same, what would I then do to the front? Subtract by what Just take is. away what's missing. So I'm actually, instead of starting with area of the front, I'm gonna start with area of the back. Cause I know the back is the entire, not missing a door, not missing anything. So when I drew this, I broke this up. Why did I break that up? Nate? Might get confused. Might get confused. Peyton, what, can, what math can I do? Ooh, so half, so I'm going to do, you're doing the top part first, the triangle part. So half times the base of that two, the height of that triangle we already talked about was one, but I don't just have the triangle. I also will have the area two times two because this is two and this is two. So that bottom section, especially if it's the entire, if it's on the back, it's just two times two. So half of two Half of two. One. one times one. 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 What's two times two? Four. So one plus four is five. Give me five. So the area of my back is five. How much area does the doggy door take up? One square foot. One square foot, right? It's one by one. So the area of the front would be the five minus the one. And it's four. Are those all of the faces that I'm going to have to paint? Um, no. Yeah. Front, oh, wait, back, wait, left, wait. right. That's it. What about the bottom? Ooh, oh, yeah, the you right. never put a bottom on a doghouse, like where you're not supposed to, because dogs like to dig in the dirt a little bit and get to somewhere cool. Most dog houses should not have a bottom on them. If anything, you put straw inside of it. But dogs like to lay in the dirt because it's cool. If you put like a wood bottom, they'll dig through it. Like the dogs get mad and they'll like rip it up. So, so my total area, my area total, 10, 10, 5, and 4. What's my total area? 29 feet squared. But what do I do with this to calculate how much it will cost? Anybody new that I haven't oh, talked to us today? Yeah, we haven't talked much. Ryan, what do you think we do? Um, don't you have to use... Multiply it by the uh, the two ninety nine. No wait, no, because there's not yet. But two ninety nine covers three square feet. So you could, yeah, you could divide by three square feet. Ah, so because this each container covers three square feet, we first divide by three, and we're gonna get almost ten. 
We'll get nine and two thirds or 9.6 repeating. Then I can multiply by the 299 cost because that's every three square feet. How many sets of three? We have nine and two thirds sets of three. So we multiply this by the 299. Now again, this is where realistically we would round, but we like to you know, be, be precise in here if possible. So we have 9.6 forever times 2.99 terminating. We get um, $28.90 if I round down, but it's money. So I got to round up. Cash registers pretty much always round up. I think there's a program to do so. If you have partial coins, they round it up. So now to find my total cost, I just add the two costs. Oh yeah. 42.76, did you, is that verified? Anyone else check it? That's what you got, good, sweet. Wait, actually, if you round up, it'd be 77, wouldn't it? Huh? But because it's money, it rounds up to the next penny. I get like, I know, I get it. Like, I, so here's the thing, I would take either answer. And a lot of times on the test, it's gonna tell you to round to the closest or round up, it like it will be specific, but in reality, money rounds up. Like that's just how cash registers are programmed, and that's because you don't see it. Next time your parent, and I, I think I've told you guys this before. Next time you go to the gas station, pump the gas for your parents. When you look at the price, like right now the price is like a dollar ninety nine, it's really a dollar nine nine nine. You never see that on the little screen that says here's what you owe, but you see it on the here's what this type of gas costs. So this place, they pretty much always round up to the next penny. When your like, transaction's done, pretty much rounds up to the next so penny. So they just want it to like, look like... Yeah, so that. really, it's $2. Like, come on. Another nine-tenths of a penny? That's $2. Like, let's stop playing this game. She... Uh, what will she do, like... Oh, yeah, you're not allowed to pay less than 99 cents. You can't. That's like I tried at Sonic. I cut that penny in half. They did not take it. So now you had to know this was coming. How much space does my dog have inside? So break this up again. If I chop this, hold up, this is not bad. If I chop this where I had chopped it, there, 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 there. And really, yeah, those should be dotted, but I, it's hard for me to draw dotted lines on the smart board. What two shapes do I have? I'm talking volume. Say what? A cube and a pyramid. A cube? Or rectangular prism. Rectangular prism. Actually, square base prism. If you look at the bottom shape, this is two, that's two, this is two. That. Now, it depends on how you look at the prism, but if I make that my base and this my height, it's a square base prism. Now you said pyramid, but if I look at the top, do I go to one single point? No, I have a triangle on this end and a triangle on this end, and I have a distance between them. So what's really the shape on top? Triangular prism. Let's deal with that first. Now here's what's convenient about the work we just did. Oh, before I forget. For your test Wednesday, and I have this written in the sub plans, they know this. For your test Wednesday, you may have a 3x5 note card for a cheat sheet. So at some point, actually I'll just pass them out so you have them. You have to turn this in with, you have to turn this in, gravity works, with your master key. Yeah, exactly, that works. Do we know the area of that triangle up there? Why, James? How do we know it? Because we just did the last. We just did it. 
James like, well, duh, we know the area. We had to find it because we were dealing with area on the last one. What was the area of that triangle? Oh, 14. 14. 14. Feet squared. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Seven, like, right now. No, just one of them, right? It's, wait. Is it? Is seven? Yeah, one, two, four. Four. We're going to back up. We're going to solve this. Because I don't like all the guessing that's happening. The base is a triangle. Area of a triangle is 1 half big B times H. Or sorry, not big B. 1 half little b times H. What's the base of the triangle? It's 2, right? The height of the triangle, and we just did this in the last problem. It's the next slide up. The height was 1. Half of 2 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Your big B here is 1. Zach? Big B is area of the base, the whole base shape. Little B is the length of the base of the shape. That's why big B is the area of base. Little B is just a length. And that, so you, that's, go back and fill out those other notes. Yeah. That, yeah, you'll get that. That'll help solidify. What's the height? Um, Jackson? This height, not the height of the triangle. Oh. I want the height of the prism. The height of the prism. How, what's another way I can talk about height of prism? Because it's not always actually the height. See? Well, uh, yeah, but how do I oh. how do I know what it is? Is it if there's phi? Is it phi, right? The height is always your distance between the bases. Yeah. So the height of your prism is five. So the volume of that top section is five feet cubed. To make this easy, I'm going to use the square as my base for my next prism. So here, big B for area of that base shape. Well, if it's a square and its dimensions are 2 and 2, area of the square, 4. So my big B is 4. What's the height or the distance between the bases? Yeah, because from that square to the square back here is 5. And that gives me 20 feet cubed. So my total volume is 25 feet cubed. We're going to do another couple chapters, Chase Cruz. This cake. One of the most expensive dessert items you'll probably ever buy if you get married is a wedding cake. I'll never get married. Absolutely, <laughs> insanely expensive. The girls are gross. But also very tasty. So, my wedding cake was a dream cake with a real fruit filling. And a, a, um, I forget, the frosting was awesome. Fondant, not exactly the tastiest thing. I don't like fondant, so I, we went with real frosting. Really expensive, but totally worth it, because, you know, it's kind of the most important day of your life. So, if we want to talk about total surface area of this cake, notice that I've got this hexagon, then I've got this hexagon, but I don't have the entire thing. Because I could not decorate the middle of that hexagon. That wouldn't make any sense. I have this hexagon, but I could not decorate the middle of it. Who's really good at kind of manipulating things with your brain that can tell me what could we do to make all those like kind of easy or kind of work together with each other? Pranav? We could not easier though. Noah? We could find the area first one, the one on top, and then multiply by three, and then find the area there. Nope. 
Mm. Really? I agree with breaking into triangles. Check this out though. My hexagon on the bottom. If I pull this out, the next layer hexagon. And the next layer hexagon. But if I can only decorate the top part here, the donut part here, and the donut part here. Ella? Rewind yourself and stop after you said find the bottom one. I know what you're doing now. Think about that bottom hexagon. I know. You know? I think I do. Um, so you find the bottom, the bottom one, and then you see you. Oh, wait. Well, you'd have to find you'd have to find all of them, but then you subtract the first two. You just That's the, the hard two. method. Oh, okay. Baylor. Oh, yeah, you just have to find the bottom hexagon because they fit into each other. It's like one of those puzzles. Like that. The bottom hexagon. <laughs> Check this out. I want you guys to understand why we're doing this. The bottom hexagon. I can only decorate. The out the edge that is showing right because then there's a cake sitting on top of it and I can't decorate the middle of it so then I go up to the next layer and the next layer I know my hexagons really bad forgive me my next layer I can only decorate here and then my next layer my top layer I can only decorate here all I really have if I look straight down on the cake it's just a giant is the big hexagon I've got the little one then the edges or like the donut of the next one and the donut of the next one. If I combine them all, I just have one big hexagon. Does that make sense? So what we're going to do is say what we're going to find first is the area of all of the tops. So the area of the tops. And I'm going to use my triangle method. So I'm going to have six triangles times the area of the triangle, so one half times the base length of the triangle times the height of the triangle. What's the, like if I broke this up into triangles, what's the base length of that triangle? Eight. eight. We see that right here. The base length is eight. What is the height of that triangle? Eight. 6.9, we see that right here. Do the math, that's easy. Half of eight, four. Six times four? Okay, we could have distributed if we kept the parentheses, but we don't need to because this is not addition. If those were adding inside of there, we could distribute we don't when it's multiplication because multiplication is fluid. It goes straight through. It's also commutative and associative. I can move numbers around. It doesn't matter. Two times three is the same as three times two. Yeah. So six times four, 24 times 6.9. And 24 times 6.9, there we maybe grab a calculator. What's going to be two times three? We get 175, or sorry, 165.6. Any questions why we were able to do that? Oh, tops. All the tops of the. So this top, this donut top all the way around, and this top all the way around. But we combined them into one big hexagon. Because think about looking straight down on the cake. You have a hexagon inside of a hexagon inside of a hexagon, but really all you have is one big hexagon. Any other questions about why we did what we just did? Now, I agree with a lot of what you guys said. If I only wanted the area of the bottom tier that I could decorate, I'd have to find the big hexagon, then subtract away the littler hexagon, and then I'd do it again for the next layer, 
And then the top layer, I only plan a small hexagon, so that's all a bunch of work I don't need to do. Always analyze the problem first. Ask yourself, how can I make it easier? There's almost always ways to make it easier. You just gotta think a little bit. Pranav? So should we use that mistake uh, just to like see the difference in the answer? If you want, but we don't have time right now. Do we we only got. Wedding cake as a test? Like, you want wedding cake? It's expensive. You're not gonna buy any. I mean, like, can we get normal cake? Like, just go to eat. Like, Maybe. Like, like not cake? Wednesday. I mean, I won't be here Wednesday. I will not get you cake if I'm not gonna be here. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the sides. The sides get decorated also, right? So if I want the area, I'm gonna say the area of, area of the bottom, um, I'm just gonna say B sides, which actually if you ever listen to a cassette tape, there's an A side and a B side, a record, there's an A side and a B side. Like a laser disc. Well, depending on if it's a double-sided disc, but yeah. It's actually not floppy. I mean, the disc inside of it's floppy, but the thing itself is hard plastic. I'll bring one if I can find one at home. Can you go home tonight? How many faces are there around that bottom tier? Not four. How many faces are around the bottom tier? Six, right? Because it's a hexagon. So I'm gonna say six times, what is the shape of those faces? Rectangles. So it's just gonna be length times height, right? Here we have length, we have height. So we have eight, what's the height? Three. Three. No, no, no. Wait. Good catch, Rye. Each layer is three inches high. We have a fixture on ours, a, a digital one. Like These are the same notes that you have. Oh, you're down at the got it? Oh, oh. we're up here. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Oh. That's, that's good. I mean, looking, away, looking forward in the notes is not a bad thing. So, 8 times 3? Uh, 24. 24. Thanks. I get really nervous when you guys take forever to answer. Now break it up. 6 times 20. Uh, 100. Make it easy. Yeah, do six times two and put the zero back on. So 120, then six times four. 24, put them together. 144. Area of the middle sides. We do the same process, except now my edge length is six and my height is three. Six times three? 18, so 6 times 18, again, break it up, I get 60, and then 6 times 8, or 8 times 6, that's normally easier, 8, 16, 32, well, if you use the 8, I could do the 6s, 6, 12, 24, 48, if I keep doubling, 12, 2 of them is 12, 4 of them is 24, double again, 48, so then we get 108. Hold on, we're going to finish this real fast. Then the area of the top sides, 6 times now 4 times 3. 4 times 3? 12. 12 times 6? 72. 72. So what we need to do is take not just all three of these. Crap, did not mean to highlight that. The 144, the 108, the 72, and... The 165.6 from the tops, because I want all sides and all tops. So 144 plus 108 plus 72 plus my 165.6 from the tops. 479.6. We get a total area of four, I got 489. Did I? Okay, 489. Sorry. I didn't know if you did it in the calculator or not. What's my label? Inches squared. Wait. No, it would be seven. 144, 108, 72, 160. I think you got an error somewhere. Oh, I didn't round. Uh, yeah, sorry. I didn't All right, so tomorrow you're on Chromebooks, finishing up everything you have to finish. Wednesday's your mastery.
we just have to learn stuff on the Monday after school break. Well, there you go. We have a test today. No. We're not done with the chapter. By the way, who all went to science fair? We all did. We all, you're the only person from this whole class. I, I went. Good. I was about to say, y'all are lazy. I'm kidding. Leon is moving on to states. So congratulations to Leon. Right. What do you think? Just for writing your recommendation? Thanks, bud. You know I lied on the whole thing, right? I'm joking. <laughs> Talking to? Talking to? Talking to? Talking to?